I do have my stone mug here though. I don't have anything in it because the thing is, I'm, uh, I'm drinking fizzy water here. And the stone mug, if you put anything fizzy in it, like it goes crazy with fizz. And then you just end up with like nothing left in your glass. So, but yes, we are of course going to be making stone mugs. It is our primary industry. So, bam. Ba -da -da -da. You have to go carve Petra into a mountainside, then invite the clowns to visit. Well, that's probably what we're doing because we, I was looking around for a sweet spot, right? Some people had commented, and I mean, there's always like lots of people with lots of different opinions, but a lot of people really want to see a sort of like Lord of the Rings style, like giant, like mountain cliffside thing. Because we've done a, a handful of flat areas lately. So I found this spot here, and if we go and check, uh, and we go to this view, this view, and I know it's tiny to see up over here. And if you haven't played Dwarf Fortress before, um, I realize that this looks, whoa, like you're looking at the Matrix. Um, and uh, it does get better once we go in. Not a ton better, but it does get better. This is very crazy. Um, this represents cliffiness. So the stars, these are extreme cliffs. So this is super sharp cliffs. We got some flat areas. Um, but we've got like a crazy good mountainside, which is excellent. We've got uh, a stream here that forks. We're going to get like cool waterways over here. Which are probably like cutting through the mountains. It's probably a Grand Canyony kind of thing. Um, the other thing is that we are in the Badlands. It's super dry here. There's no trees or other vegetation. So it's like I, we came to the realization what we're actually doing is we're building the Petra. Like it's a it's a dry, arid Badland, and we're carving a like fortress into the side of a cliff. We are literally making Petra here, and so uh, <laughs> um, so you know. The, 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 the meme potentials are great. Um, hey, Wymy, I hope this can pay for the lost luggage. Thank you very much, Wymy. Uh, yeah, so I wasn't the only one. So we, we arrive here, I arrive, you know, back home at the airport, and it's me and, like, a handful of people. We're all waiting by, like, the luggage carousel, and then at some point it just stops, and we're like, yeah, none of us got our luggage. Um, so it's not my suitcase that was misplaced. It's, I think there's, like, a whole, like, cartload of luggage that never made it onto the plane in Toronto. Um, so, you know, good job there. I don't know if to blame Air Canada or blame uh, Pearson Airport or whatever, but a whole bunch of people. And for me, it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, you know, I don't have I don't have some of my Gamescom swag and I don't have like my toiletries bag and stuff like that, but I may do. Um, one of the families I was waiting there with, like, so this is a family, a couple and two super young kids, like, including a baby. Uh, they don't have their luggage. Um, so they don't have any of their baby stuff. They didn't have their freaking uh, car seat so that they could, like, leave the airport in a car. Uh, and they actually came up here from, they're from Corpus Christi in Texas. They flew here uh, at the time of the vacation to dodge the hurricane. So you've got these people that are effectively displaced because of the hurricane that show up here and they've got none of their stuff for their kids. So, yeah. I normally never check any bags. Uh, but um, it was actually, the thing to blame is the Presidente uh, statue. It came in a box. It was just, I couldn't quite fit everything in. Not with like, you know, the, the cookies and strip waffles and things that people gave me at the fan meet either. Couldn't quite fit everything into the one bag. So I had to check my normal carry-on bag, but I brought a backup sort of duffel bag that was just, had been packed in there um, for just that. So I'm like, it's fine. I'll check the, the, the carry-on bag, like my normal carry-on bag, and I'll just carry the thing. And then it means I don't have my stuff. So they're supposed, assuming it was just in Toronto, it should get to me today, but yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, when I travel out, that's why I always have the, the check or the, the carry on with me because the last thing I want to do is travel out somewhere and be stuck. Luckily, coming back home, like it's fine. I'm at home. I'm okay. I'll be fine. So, uh, Persia, thank you very much for the tip as well. I think your Excel spreadsheet has been hacked or something. I don't know what you mean. Oh, are you ta you're talking about you're talking about the interface here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Oh, you want to see the other biome? The, the, both biomes are exactly the same. So we are we are hovering over two biomes. Neither one of them have trees. All of them have lots of minerals and stuff like that. So most likely they're going to be two different um, sets of minerals. But yeah, so I think we're going to embark here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ba -ba. Ba -da 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 -da. Um, do we, can we change, we can change our civilization here. So, there are eight current dwarven civilizations. One has fallen, but the others all seem to be pretty good. We've got the Aqua Gold, the Tool of Dust, the Sealing of Doctrine, the Fortunate Hatchet, the Oars of Imprisoning, the Cobalt Treaties, the Accidental Glazes, which is what's selected right now, and the Sunken Keys. Does it, I think it might auto-select the closest one. 
So, does anyone have a preference? As far as I can tell, they all have very similar populations and everything like that. So it's mostly a question of what is the coolest name? What, which one would we prefer? Check for wars. Um, these are our neighbors currently. We're not at war there. I would be very surprised if there was anything sort of outstanding right now. Sunken Keys, Cobalt, Tool of Dust. Few votes for Sunken Keys. So, the Sunken Keys are super far away. They're, they're over here on the east side of the continent. We'd be on a west. I don't think that really matters in-game. Cobalt Treaties, people like that. Um, again, no particular info. Where are the Cobalt Treaties? Oh, the Cobalt Treaties are way over here, too. The Sunken Keys and the Cobalt Treaties are basically neighbors. Alright, I think I've seen a lot of things for the Cobalt Treaties, so we're going to go with that. Um, do I have the Legend Viewer up? I do, uh, which means I can go and load up the Cobalt Treaties over here, find out a wee bit about them. <clears throat> um, the first leader, this is cool, the first leader of the Cobalt Treaties was a Dwarf Necromancer. Excellent. Uh, so we worship these gods over here, including uh, the Ship of Lobsters. The god of oceans and salt. Well, there you go. Perfect. That is perfect. And then the history of, like, all their sites and things like that. Uh, current population. Mostly dwarfs. Some elves live in it. That's kind of interesting. We have one plump helmet man. 13,000 horses. Excellent. Sounds great to me. The Cobalt Treaties. Yeah, I love the idea of the Necromancer King. That's fantastic. That is really cool. Um, Alright, so I think we can just go ahead and embark. And we will uh, uh, we'll start from one of these uh, setups and do some tweaking. I think that one's going to be fine. And we, of course, have to rename some of our dwarfs. Customize nickname. So our first dwarf, I don't know if I can paste. No, not from here. Uh, I could also rename things in Dwarf Therapist, which might be a little easier, but that's okay. Uh, the first dwarf is going to be Mark and Stir over here. Welcome to the party. Uh, next up, we're going to have uh, Toth Lord. That sounds very dwarfy for some reason. I like that. Uh, then we have <laughs> Goat the Dog. Dog. I could have renamed it to Goat the Dwarf, but there we go. And McSharky uh, 1975. I think that'll all fit. It will. Good. Uh, Tyrannic Fish. It's a good name, too. Uh, Felix Garner. Felix Garner. And last, but certainly least, uh, Citro. Excellent. So those are going to be our first seven dwarves over here. Um, so they're, they're, because we've, we've gone with this embark, their, their skills have been assigned. We could change it around, but I think it's okay. Mark Enster over here is going to be a miner. And organizer, consoler, disciple. So probably going to be our first leader, actually, which is cool. Uh, then we've got Toth Lord over here, who looks like he's going to be maybe a bit of a bookkeeper. Uh, and another miner and wood crafter. Excellent. Goat the dog is going to be a grower, so a farmer. Uh, persuader, judge of intent, appraiser. He's going to be our um, merchant type person. And everyone's got one rank in discipline. I wonder what that does. Uh, Marky or Mick Sharky here is going to be our carpenter and building designer, and our diagnostician. So he's going to be our doctor. Tyrannic fish. Ambusher, Butcher, Tanner. So this is our hunter. Uh, competent crosswoman. I think that will mean he'll start with that gear. I don't know. We'll probably we'll be bringing it with us. Uh, Felix Gardner is going to be our mason and our crafter, making our mug sports. Hey, yo. And Citro is our lumberjack, mechanic, brewer, cook. Does a lot of little things, so that's going to be fine. Let's take a look at the items. Let's take a look at the... Uh, what just came into the whiskey and chocolate fund over here. If I can find it. There we go. Uh, oh, I missed El Noco Grande a second ago. Thank you very much, El Noco. My appreciation for finally seeing a Dwarf Fortress stream. I hope you'll continue and finish it as well. Love from Sweden. We'll talk. And yeah, I'm hoping... That's why I'm talking about maybe doing it as an offline Let's Play to continue it. That way it'll help encourage that we finish it. Dante! Thank you very much. Yay, Dwarf Fortress! Get yourself some Plup Helmet wine with this. Well, thank you very much, Dante. Uh, we'll probably be digging deep enough to find the Inferno at some point. And Gouger! 
Thank you as well. Are you participating in the U4 LAN party in Poland in October? I am not. I, I was I was invited to attend, um, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to um, to uh, to manage it. So uh, it does look pretty cool though. Uh, so what are we bringing with us? Okay, all the points have been spent. So again, we could change this around, but we've got beer, ale, wine, rum, the essentials. Uh, we've got some meat, yak meat, kia meat, okay. Uh, one steel anvil shirt, one copper crossbow, that's for a hunter. Uh, we've got some quivers and some bolts to get started, that's okay. Plump helmet spawn. Uh, so plump helmets are mushrooms, and these are basically like the mushroom seeds to start off with. But they don't grow by, by seeds, it's like, what, spores for mushrooms? Anyway, um, pigtail, se pigtail seeds, you can use that to grow a crop that you can use to make, um, um, like, clothing with. Uh, cave wheat, more food, sweet pods, more food things, a couple of picks for mining, a single copper battle axe, which we can use for chopping down trees as well as for fighting. And we have a, we have some, a, some pond turtle meat and some cave lobster meat. What we don't have is a cat. To, oh no, over here. Uh, two dogs. Okay. Two female dogs, one male dog, two female cats, one male cat. Excellent. We're going to go with it. It's going to be fine. If you're starting an area without trees, you want to avoid for beds. That's true. Shit. We do have to make a change. You're absolutely right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drop one cat and one dog. We still have a breeding pair, so it's going to be okay. Um, we're going to be able to start alcohol production pretty fast. Oh, I mean, we don't need the battle axe to cut down trees, although it's still nice for defense. You know what? I am going to drop this. It's going to be fine. Um, there we go. Remove you. So what we want to do is add um, wood. It doesn't matter what, uh, what kind of wood. Um, oak. Oak is nice. And we'll spend all of our remaining points on getting as many logs as possible. Because, yeah, in, in normal Dwarf Fortress, you can only make um, you can only make beds out of wood. I don't remember how many units of wood, but we'll have to focus entirely on that. The other problem that's going to happen is, uh, unless we strike coal or something like that, we're not going to be able to, to get our, sort of our charcoal kind of thing for burning furnaces. Um, so we might, A, find coal, or we might, B, have to go down to the magma layer that much faster. Uh, yeah, you're right. The steel anvil is super expensive, and I don't know why it's in here. We can replace it with... Um, is there a search? We can replace it with an iron anvil, which is considerably cheaper. And therefore, I will just bring a crap ton more wood. We'll also get some wood from dismantling our wagon. I think we get three logs from that. Alright, looks fine. Let's bring a little bit more lobster with us. Let's do it! Can you get tree seeds? No, and if you... um. You can trade for wood, and if you find underground caverns, there might be um, tree-like things in the underground caverns. So we're going to be fine. We could bring coal. No, it's okay. If we need a little bit for emergency, we can do a little bit with the, the wooden logs. We're going to be okay. We're embarking. And done. Oh, I didn't I didn't customize the name of our, um, of our, of our base, our city. So we'll see how that goes. Bah, bah, bah. Oh, the new land for our kingdom. A land flowing with milk and booze. <laughs> milk and booze. There we go. We'll get some music. I'll probably want to tune these. Because I suspect... Uh, can you not... Oh, you can tune the overall volume. There's no way that's not too loud, I bet. There you go. Um, I do have Armic Vision running as well. Um, it didn't auto pick up. I don't know. We're, we're gonna we're gonna come back to the 3D vision later on. We're gonna go. We're gonna just work from here for now. Yeah, but there's a couple of different mods that add like 3D thing. That's why one of the fun things to do will be indeed to um to make like a cool looking base. Now this is very interesting here, um because and this is what. It... Yeah. Okay. I'm hoping the autosave went through, because that's one of the reasons I don't run Stone Sense, is because it fucking crashes everything. Everything just crashed. So, it should have autosaved automatically on the Embark. But that's why I've never, I don't run Stone Sense normally, because for some reason it likes to make everything fucking explode and die. 
<sighs> no. No. Don't run. Well, oh, sound sense is fine. Why is it auto trying to load up stone sense anyway? Come on, baby. Tell me you got it. Nope. I think I'm going to have to go back again. I do have the option set to auto-save. Initial save over here, but I don't think it took. Oh, you think it's in the DF hack tab? Ah, yeah. Let's turn that shit off. Ah, <sighs> you fucking thing. My apologies. So, um... Where's my little cursor? Way down there. So I'm going to try to find that spot again. Which should be... Yeah, this is it. So I was going to say, uh, there was a, um, there was a uh, waterfall there. So this is the same spot as before. So we can embark here. I agree, this is why game should stay two day. We're going to take Nebulatron. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna rename them when I get in the game. It'll be faster. Uh, we're going to go to the tab view. We're going to remove the steel anvil. We're going to add in um, a iron anvil. And we're going to add in the wood. Ah, oh, you bugger. And I want oak. We're going to spend it all on here. And I know I like I tweaked some other things, but honestly, we're probably going to be okay in it with the with the updated anvil. 66 logs, it's probably fine. Okay, embark. But I've noticed it before, it's like when I'm resizing stone sense, maybe when it's like, maybe because the game was still loading and saving and it was hung, there's like weird things. So I'll rename them in Dwarf Therapist. There's not a mod list for this because it's not, it's just a lazy new pack. Alright. <clears throat> after you have arrived, after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond, your harsh track has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all... Um Goblemul. We'll find out a, um, um, a translation for that in a second. There are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes sustenance. Uh, whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You're expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is in spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the jaguars get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here in this place. Nishtalith, uh, which means trade riddled. Strike the earth. So we'll let the game... I think it's now it's doing the autosave. Now it's doing the autosave. I had to get through that to do it. Yeah, I know it's slightly off. I'm going to adjust the window in a second once we get in here. I just want to, you know, get things back up. Mm -mm -mm. Ba -ba and then it, it might be safe to load up Stone Sense or Armok Vision or something again after that. We'll see how it goes. But we'll make sure we've got the save first. But really, like, the Armok Vision is really going to come into play once we've got something built. Hokidoke. Uh, you're in here. Let's justify the screen. There we go. And the top. That looks okay. Bam. Okay. I don't remember the control. Like, check this out! Check this out! That's fantastic! Um. Oh, it's got the, um. I personally don't like the multi level view. So. That's that. That's not what I'm looking for. Um, multi-level? Did I crash the fucking game again? Because I put in what? Zero? Oh my god! So I probably want multi-level one. <laughs> multi-level one. There we go. Fuck's sake. You don't check for a divide by zero in your program code? 
I mean, I realize it's just like modded shit, but give me a break. That's not the game itself crashing. That's like the mod crashing the game. Okay. So now, what we can hopefully do... See, I thought there was a big uh, waterfall here. Uh, no, I think there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yes, there is a waterfall right here. Boom. I mean, it's not super big. Just a couple of Z-levels, but it's neat, you know? So how's the sound? Are we are we good? Too quiet? FPS killer? Yeah, probably. Um, waterfalls do tend to do bad performance for that. I'm going to, really quickly, I'm going to put in a, an instruction to deconstruct the wagon. Um, so I guess the cliff faces were just along here. I didn't realize the area is quite a bit flatter than expected. So our sort of Petra idea is not quite the same. Oh! Again, not super steep, but we do have at least one Z-level worth of cliff over here. It's actually quite flat. Oh, the music actually just stopped, so that's part of it. Now, I am kind of tempted. Bridges for sure. Now, this is only a brook, so you can actually walk across this pretty easily. Um, I'm tempted to, like, dig down somewhere over here and build walls all along the water here. And build, like, that kind of fortress here. Then bridge across over here and build something really cool. Yeah, we're definitely not going to re-roll again. Um, we can still, we can still do something. Here, we'll build up. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, so yeah, I think what we're gonna do is dig down. So, we've got boulders and stuff, soil. Like, there's no plants at all. It's like, bone, bone dry. Isn't it a stream bigger than the brook? Oh, you're right, it is a stream. So maybe we can't walk across it. I actually don't know. Um, one question is, uh, no, we want unit view. We got, we got, we got fish. Pikes. Uh, we've got river otters, alligator snapping turtles. If I recall correctly, those things can be really dangerous. We don't have any dangerous critters yet, but probably at some point. So I think we're going to dig straight down. I don't know how many layers we have to dig before we find stone. Um, what we could do, at the risk of, you know, crashing the game again, um, is do a... Is it prospect all to get all the counts of various minerals and just confirm that we have something we can work with? You know, out of curiosity. Um, there's gold in them there hills. Okay, uh, hematite is an iron-bearing ore, so we're going to be able to do that. Tetrahedrite, I think, is what? Copper and lead. Galena's got silver. we got native silver as well. I'm very happy about this. We can do some fun, fun stuff. Uh, we got gems. Uh, do we have anything in here? Ooh, pitch blend. We've got uh, uranium. Not that it matters in this game. Um, I don't think we have any types of coal. So we'll definitely be looking to import wood and coal. And I think we'll be needing to go and dig down to the magma layer quite quickly. Golden Petra? Yeah. Silver goblets with gems? Ah, uh, maybe! Um, once we get once we get our our, our lava based um, smithing going on, that may become a possibility. But at first, we'll just be making stone mugs. Boom! Yeah, magma spelter is what we have to do. So yeah, I'm thinking we sort of dig down here and then build walls all along here, and it's gonna look really cool. Walls that evolve into the to, um, pitch blend is what you make the mugs you sell to the elf. <laughs> I don't think natural uranium is radioactive enough to necessarily be a problem. I mean, I suppose with like extremely long overexposure. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to dig down, like, just over here. Something like that. And some up downstairs, and we'll go down quite a few layers here, because I know we have a lot of uh, stone layers going on. Alright. Oh, look, look at the water flow over here. Yeah, that is going to be bad for the FPS. We're already below 100. That's not a good sign. <laughs> 